you outlined some nice markers in the book, you know, markers that I use in practice as well, which are, you know, quite straightforward in a sense, patients will sort of understand them quite well. Can we start with waist circumference? You know, what, what kind of numbers are we aiming for? And then why well, is that thanks. important? Yeah, so, you know, there are five primary measurements that we use to determine metabolic health. Um, and these were the five measurements used in that study that I referred to earlier, showing that 88% of us are not metabolically healthy. Uh, waist circumference is the first one. Um, very easy. You can measure it at home. You just take a tape measure um, about, you know, a little bit above your belly button. Best to measure it first thing in the morning. And if you are a man, you want that to be less than 40 inches. Uh, if you are a woman, you want it to be less than 35 inches. And, um, you know, the reason that's such an important marker is it's a reflection of uh, what we call your visceral fat level, the fat that is around your organs within your belly, within your abdomen. Uh, and that fat in particular uh, is a driver of metabolic disease. Uh, so, you know, that kind of gets at that problem of, you know, TOFI, like we talked about, thin on the outside, fat on the inside. Uh, it gets around the weight issue um, because, you know, you can be normal or underweight and still have a, an enlarged waist circumference. Uh, and, you know, this is actually in and of itself, one of the best single predictors of metabolic health is your waist circumference. Yeah, the great marker. And, you know, with that white adipose tissue being so pro-inflammatory, yeah, it's a real clear sign that, hey, just as you mentioned, regardless if you're technically overweight, if you've got belly fat, then we know that there's going to be likely some, some issues going on. What about uh, some other markers, blood sugar levels? Talk to me about some targets there for blood sugar, fasting yeah. glucose levels. Um, so blood sugar levels, you know, the goal there is for with, for your blood, your fasting blood sugar. So, you know, eight to 12 hours fasted, the amount of uh, sugar, the amount of glucose in your blood, you want that to be under a hundred uh, milligrams per deciliter. These are the U.S. units. Mm -hmm. um, and um, that needs to be without the use of glucose lowering medications. So if you've already been diagnosed with type 2 diabetes and started on medications to lower your blood glucose, that is an indicator that you are not metabolically healthy. The other um, measurements we look at, um, there are two other measurements we look at from your blood work. Those are both from your cholesterol panel. But importantly, it is not the LDL cholesterol that we talked about earlier. It's the other two, you know, measurements that are commonly on a cholesterol panel, your HDL, your so-called good cholesterol. And as the nickname implies, you know, the higher that is, the better. Uh, so if you are a woman, you want that to be over 50. Uh, again, US units, milligrams per deciliter. If you are male, you want that to be over 40. And then we look at your triglyceride level um, and that the lower, the better. And the official metric for that is under 150 milligrams per deciliter. I think that's a little generous, but um, yeah. either way, you know, that's the official metric. And the final measurement we look at to get our five measurements of metabolic health is your blood pressure. And you want that to be less than 130 over 85. And that again needs to be without the use of medications. What most physicians fail to recognize, what most people fail to recognize, is that high blood pressure is one of the hallmarks of poor metabolic health. It's oftentimes the first sign that's going to be obvious. And yet, when you go to your doctor and they diagnose you with high blood pressure, it is exceedingly rare that they are going to talk about metabolic health or recognize it as uh, part of metabolic health. And that's just one of the obvious, you know, symptoms of what's wrong with our medical system these days. I was just going to say, Doc, with a lot of male clients, kind of downtown Toronto, central London, that's often the one that is a little elevated and it's often the one that gets medicated. And then there's almost no conversation after that. And we can already see some of these other markers that you mentioned, you know, maybe the waist is starting to come up around 40, the glucose levels are starting to rise up and we sort of just ignore it or, or even wait rather than taking action. Is that sounds like something that you see as, as well. Yeah, I think oftentimes the problem is we're, you know, in the healthcare system as physicians, we're not connecting those dots properly. You know, uh, we really stop at, you know, here is a problem, high blood pressure. Here is how we treat it with medication. And we don't think about those underlying causes. And, you know, we don't, 
you know, look at uh, those metrics, you know, as a group. Uh, we might recognize that the blood glucose is elevated and we might recognize that the patient has high blood pressure, but we don't put those together to say there's a common, you know, root cause here, uh, poor metabolic health. And I think that is one of the failings, one of the biggest failings of the medical system these days. And do you think part of that is just the amount of time that we have with patients now or that docs would have with patients when they come in and just in terms of being able to educate and whatnot, or is it... You know, the, the training in the past, what are your thoughts on some of the underlying reasons why? Yeah, I think it is a time and an educational uh, factor. I think, uh, you know, the way that the healthcare system is set up, you know, especially here in the United States, but I know it's similar, you know, in Canada and the UK, uh, you know, there are too many sick people, quite honestly, and not enough doctors to take care of them. Uh, so, you know, doctors are so busy taking care of sick people that they have lost focus on keeping people healthy. And again, you know, the educational system gets in the way as well. You know, we really don't get taught to focus on metabolic health, on, you know, what we eat as a determinant of our health and preventative efforts uh, to keep people healthy we get educated as physicians on how to take care of sick people. Uh, so, you know, all of those things have kind of conspired to get the healthcare system where it is. And quite frankly, you know, most physicians are just trapped within that system. You know, understand that physicians want to help patients. They want to do their best to help patients. They just don't have the knowledge around this uh, to be able to uh, properly educate people. And I can say that based on my experience, you know, I had to basically go outside the system to get this information. You know, I learned this information from many non-physicians. Uh, you know, my journey um, really started um, with a, uh, you know, an author, a scientific uh, journalist. His name is Gary Tobbs. Uh, probably many in your audience are familiar with him. Um, but, you know, he was the first one to introduce me to these concepts. And then I had to go back and say, why didn't I learn this in medical school? Why have I been a heart surgeon, you know, at that time for over 10 years and never really heard these concepts? 